Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's virtual time series meetup. My name is Caitlin Croft. I am super excited to see you all here. Um, and if you've been to any of our events, you know that we'd like to give our friends just a couple of minutes to join. But I'd love seeing everyone who is joining right at the top of the hour. Um, while we give them a little bit more time, um, just want to go over a few housekeeping items. This session is being recorded and the recording of this meetup will be made available on YouTube later today, as well as Ignacio's slides will be made available so you can review them at a later date. I know lots of people ask for that. Don't worry, it'll all be there later today. We have these events every month. So if you're doing something really cool with InfluxDB at home and you would like to share it, uh, please feel free to email me. We've had everything from barbecuing to beer making. Um, next month, we have a gentleman who's using InfluxDB to monitor his internet service provider and tracking the speeds, which, you know, with all of us stuck at home, I'm sure we're all probably uh, <laughs> checking that more than we normally would. Um, so just a couple of reminders with Zoom. I know we're all super familiar with Zoom by this point, but please feel free to post any questions you may have for Ignacio in the chat box or in the Q&A, which you can find at the bottom of your screen. We will answer all the questions at the end. So don't worry. And if there's a question that you wanna ask that you would actually like to be unmuted, I am more than happy to unmute you so you can talk directly to Ignacio. We also have a bunch of different events, virtual events um, for our communities. So next week, we have the InfluxDB IOX Tech Talks with Paul Dix, as well as the entire team, engineering team who is building out InfluxDB IOX. So be sure to check that out. It's next Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. GMT. And those sessions are also recorded and we have them every month. Uh, we have a webinar coming up with Cribble, and they're talking about upgrading to InfluxDB 2.0, I believe, um, and how it's easier with their solution. And also, it's coming up to the time for Influx Days at MIA. So, of course, this year, again, we are going to be virtual, but we're super excited to see everyone back. So Influx Days EMEA 2021 is going to be held on May 18th and 19th. We also will have the flux training, um, which is coming back, of course. And we also uh, are working on a couple of other trainings. So it'll be a really great um, conference and we're definitely working on up-leveling the experience so it's even more amazing than last year. So without further ado, I'm gonna hand things off to Ignacio. He is part of the Influx Data team here. Uh, we actually started working together about a year ago, I'd say, when he was a yeah. community member, built, cranking out InfluxDB templates. We were all like, who is this guy in Uruguay? We need to get to know him better. So since then, he has built tons of templates, um, including one that he will highlight today. Um, and uh, he's now an Influx Ace, and he also has joined the team. So without further ado, I will hand things off to Ignacio. Okay, thank you, Caitlin. Okay, hello, everyone. Uh, let me see if I... Okay, hello, everyone. My name is, uh, is Ignacio uh, van der Rovenbroek. Uh, I am a solution architect and info data that uh, I mentioned before, uh, that mentioned before Caitlin. I joined to the team like something like three months ago. I am based in Montevideo, Uruguay. Uh, this is in South America, uh, in the case that you know you don't know where, where, where is Uruguay is, it's a, it's a small country. I have almost 18 years of professional experience. Uh, I'm 30 years blogging. I'm blogging mostly in Spanish. Uh, I see uh, in the case that you are interested, I can leave you the, the, the blog address in the, in the chat. I also, as mentioned Kaylin too, I am in Flux Ace and the last year I won the Founder Choice Award for my contributions uh, to the community. So uh, a, a, few, a few characteristics of my personality is I never stop to learn. Uh, breaking things is the better way for me. And also I am competitive hard-headed player. 
I always look how to improve my games. Uh, and this is one of the, the topic that we going to touch uh, this day. So let, let me tell you a, a little story. Uh, I started to play a very young age in an Atari clone. Uh, in this country is by uh, original Atari, you know, uh, was very expensive. And, and in the market was fully of the this kind of Atari, the, the, the clowns ones, you know, and I start to play with one of them. Uh, after that, I am playing for a long time in a family home. This is like, in, 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 again, in this, in this country, uh, we, we used, to, used to, to, to have clones of these machines, and I have one, one of them. And I had a short period playing on PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3 for a long time, yeah when I start to play online competitive games. And now I am playing with uh, Xbox One S and PC. So in the PC, I always uh, play in, in PC, but yeah, I just, I get older, you know, and <laughs> I, I choose a, a console to, to over a, a, a PC. But no, always was easy for me. I, I never got the high scores. The score, the high scores, except for Tetris, and Tetris was a very good player. But I always, I was always a, an average player, and that never was enough for me. I, I want more, and I always want to be better. So, but how, how we can be the best, uh, how we can improve uh, our game. So, and I, I am pretty sure that a lot of you know that in the 90s require practice. It's practice, 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 lots of life in the game, Mario Bros, whatever, and they practice hours of practice. And the 2000 also was with practice. And the 2010 uh, is like getting analytics about your game. So maybe it's not fun if you, don't like data, but I think that if we are here in this, this meetup, it's because we love data. So one of the <clears throat> one of the, the 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 possibilities of improve our game or improve our business is using data, and nothing better than InfluxDB to analyze that data. So since uh, the last year, and this the, yeah, from the last year. Uh, to, uh, due to COVID-19 lockdown, you know, I started to play Counter-Strike Global Offensive, play with my ex co worker friends. And you might know Counter-Strike is one of the most popular games since it became free to download and playing a few years ago. Uh, also, you may know that it's a very competitive game, even has a professional league with players earning a lot of money. It's like, we, I, I, I review some of the salaries of the Vice. The Vice is one of the best players of the world. And in the last year, he collects some, something almost $2 million USD for playing Counter-Strike. So it's serious business. And, but back on me a little is, you know, that CSGO has ranks. Uh, and depend of the several factor, of course, win as a team is the most important, but your performance is important too. Uh, you can, when you, when you start to rank in Counter-Strike, you can start in Silver, and Silver 2 and Silver 3, but it's very rare that you rank and automatically go, go road rank up to Nova or the Legend Diddy Eagle, for example, and, and so on. It's, it's a path, it's very hard path, you know, and for most people it takes years uh, rank up and it's, it's like a religion for a lot of people. So what, what was my problem and why I start to use that data to, to, to analyze my, my performance? Uh, I start to investigate an, an iPhone, I found an API. So when I 
when I start to to investigate uh, and try to understand what is the data that is hosted, I found that exists an API and exists a lot of information about me uh, as player. So my, my real problem and why I start to collect this data is for is because I have almost 500 of hours playing and my ranks never go up of silver four. And my kill death radio was very low. And that was my problem. So I found the API, I started to use Telegraph, I figured out that all the data is available and it's very good to analyze and start to improve our game. Uh, I let me let me let me show you a little more about my, my stats before that I start to analyze my data with Influx TV. So as you can see, a lot of shots, a few hits, but having this information was the glory for me. Was having because I love data. I, I like analyze data. So I started to understand which guns I was able to kill more with. I started to using them more. So after a few months, basically is my, I have a calculation that is like 300, 300 hours later, I can say that the decisions that I made uh, by saying the information I get about my game help to improve it. Now I am ranked as Nova Master and my kill death radio improved by 20%, 2.96. Uh, this was no easy path. Yeah, the data was very important because uh, allowed me to understand which, which guns I perform better in, at the game. It's not only the AK-47 or the M4 if you play Contra Strike, you know what I'm talking about. But I try, I, I understand how, how which guns uh, I, I, I perform better, but also to understand about the tactics of the game is very important. Yeah, the data is very important and helped me a lot, but understand the tactics of the game is very important. So it's like, this is my short story that how I start to play uh, with Influx TV to analyze my uh, Counter Strike performance. So, oh, sorry. Data is beautiful and the key to learn and improve. And also, pretty sure that you heard about that sentence that say, if you can measure, you can improve it. So, let's see how we can improve our CSGO game in a few steps with inclusivity. First, I'm going to show you my template, but that template is available in the GitHub of community, or community templates in, uh, in the, in the Data account. But when you, what you need to do is import the CSGO community template from GitHub to clone to account, if you don't have a Cloud2 account, uh, it's free. You can open and start to play with. It's, it's, it's very safe to, to play, no, no problem. But if you have a open source version, you can use uh, uh, InfluxDB open source uh, version 2.x uh, 2. and start to, to, to import and get this metrics too. As I said before, import the community template. We need to register your Steam account, our Steam account, to get an API key, a developer API key. It's not easy to find. It took me a while because it's not like, okay, uh, API key developer Steam and no show up in, in, in Google, but there is a, the link to, to, to get that, that, um, that API key. Also, we need your Steam ID. And the Steam ID is not your username. STEM ID is a long number that using this tool, STEM ID Finder, you can, you can, uh, you can find 
the, that number that we need to join to the API key and add to the configuration of Telegraph. And in this case, we are ready to go and start to get metrics about our game. So let's uh, let's see a demo. Let's see a demo of how easy is start to collect some data using InfluxDB. As I mentioned before, we need to get a, a Steam Web API key. This uh, this was funny because this uh, this change this change uh, in a, a few days ago, and my old keys was revoked. So when I start to prepare for this meeting for this uh, presentation, I just was uh, to my dashboard, see my my performance, uh, and see that. I, I had no data, so I play I play it yesterday. So, and and results that uh, the key was revoked because all the system was changed a few days ago. So this is my key. Don't worry, I'm going to erase after this presentation. <laughs> but you can register and have uh, a key too is for free. You uh, you can have a only one key, but is not serious to track this kind of performance of the game is one of more of sufficient. And we need to, to get the um, uh, our Steam ID. So in this case, I'm going to put my Steam username. Okay. Sorry, sorry for that. And this is my Steam ID. We need to get the decimal here. So, and with this data, we can start to start to work with Telegraph. Uh, we have here my my Cloud Two instance or InfluxDB. As you can see here in board, I don't have anything related to CSGO. So, I going to I going to go to here and go to template. So one of the things that we need to do is, let me open it here, go to github.com, influx data, community templates, and you can find here a lot, a lot of templates that the community was made and is available to, to use by you. It's not only, of course, to measure your performance of the game, you can measure, you can, used for uh, Kubernetes, Kafka, Linux system, Minio, MongoDB, uh, Microsoft SQL Server, and so on. So in this case, we're going to monitor you know, track our performance in Counter-Strike. So let's go to CSGO, you see a screenshot, and we're going to take this URL. We're going to copy, we're going, we're going, we're going to buy back to uh, our cloud to instance we're going to paste the up for templates and as you can see we're going to import a dashboard a telegraph configuration in this case we need to we need to do a, a change so in this case i have the configuration on my local machine so no need to import and this time uh, this configuration we, we're going to create a bucket and labels. Let's go into install template. And as, you, as we can see, we successfully installed that template. If we go into boards, we're going to see that CSGO is empty, no data. We're going to buckets. The CSGO bucket was created. The telegraph, we don't add. In that, in that case, but the InfluxDB template can be host uh, Telegraph configuration, and it's very cool feature. So I have my tokens that, for say for saving time, I already pass as environment as environment variable. So let me show you that I already I export as environment variables uh, my Influx token. Uh, my organization. The organization in Cloud2 is important. 
is our email uh, that we use to register our account. So the template also, you can find here that file is using but a, a file called csgo.sh is a, a Linux executive file and do something very, very, very easy to understand. It's a core, it's a score S and get the data from the API endpoint. In this case, let me see, let me show you, sorry, that I have SSO SH. So I have the core, the endpoint, my key, uh, my stem ID. Okay. So we can do is like uh, this ago. And so I, as, as you can see here, is it's like in no order at all, but all the data is bringing from the Counter Strike server. So let's clear here. So let, let's see the Telegraph configuration. The Telegraph configuration is pointed to my Cloud2 instance, the Influx token that I take in as environment variable, and my organization, the bucket is the CSGO that is created from the template. And we are pointing, we are using the input Excel plugin, and we are pointing to the CSGO SH uh, file. And one of the most important things is the data format needs to be defining as JSON. Okay. So one of uh, one we have all the settings set. We we can run Telegraph config CSGO Telegraph. I'm going to add the bug to see what is happening. So we start Telegraph. We are successfully connected to InfluxDB Cloud Instance. And this configuration is, um, is configured to, to take the data each 10 seconds, but it's not necessary unless you are following a player specifically that is playing in that time, in that moment. So uh, let me go back to my dashboard here. And we're going to see I hope my dad. So I played yesterday uh, a dead match game, uh, no competitive game, but I have eight kills. I die uh, 10 times, MVP one time. And you can see here, what is the stat by weapons? So in the AK 47, I shoot that number, I hit that other and I have most uh, 5,000 of kills. And in, in, in this case, you can see that the telegraph is pulling data. And in the case we are playing, we're going to get new data in each pooling. So this is very interesting that this helped me a lot to understand that, for example, uh, using, using uh, Pepe Bison in that moment, I was very good. The same with uh, MP7, but also to try to understand about the AK47 or the M4I1 that what well, this is my more little weapon that I use in, in CSGO. One of the things that maybe sounds interesting to you is, okay, I don't play Counter Strike. I'm not so good to per to track my performance. But one of the things that is interesting that you, you can track the performance of other players. One of the requirements is that the player has the uh, profile public. And for example, I just, um, I am reviewing the profile of the pro players. Let me go bigger with that. And I don't know, for example, device has not your, their account um, public, but yes, Dupree. And if you can, you can change the Steam ID for the Dupree Steam ID and you can track the performance of that player. So 
as you can imagine, you can collect the stat about a bunch of players that are playing uh, in that moment, again, in, in the professional league, and you can see in real time the performance of that team. So I don't have any more that show you, but this is that something that helped me a lot to uh, understand how I perform with which guns in the game. And I, I have, I, have, I, I, can I can say that, certainly I can say that helped me a lot to, uh, to upgrade my experience in the game. I was able to enjoy more the game because if you are a player of CSGO, you, you know that the, the silver ranks are trash ranks, are, is full of trolls, you know, and then, and it's, it's, it's almost impossible to play, uh, to rank up. Nobody in that, in that ranks wants rank up. So it's, it's very hard to, to get out of silver to Nova, for example. So this is a little about my story about playing CSGO. I started to play in during the, the, the COVID. I stay, I keep playing one, two times a day. So with friends. And it's it's very fun to me. And understand how I performing is it's fun to me too. So the community of Influx TV uh, do more uh, did more other another templates to track uh, the game. You can find the Apex, Apex Lansion uh, in the GitHub uh, of Influx Data and the community template GitHub and another for Fortnite. Uh, I was playing Fortnite, it's full of kids. <laughs> was very interesting. But yeah, you can you can uh, start to track right now the Counter Strike, Apex Lansion, and Fortnite. And if you game, for example, as an API and you can exploit that data, you can create an InfluxDB template too. So it's time for q and I don't know, hey, Eileen. Yep, uh, you got lots of questions, Ignacio, which I'm not surprised yeah. at, at all. So the first question is, can I measure other players' performance with the API key? For example, my teammates. Yeah, you can. You can you can track other other uh, other players, yeah. Using your API key and select and using their Steam ID, yeah. You can. Perfect. What is your oh, sorry? Where is your Influx DB running? Is it running on AWS or is it running somewhere else? It's running in uh, AWS. is a is a region of Influx DB cloud. We have a service that is InfluxDB Cloud uh, that is based, it looks like more like uh, InfluxDB 2.0, uh, the open source version, but it's hosted and maintained by us. And, and, I, and I am hosted all the data there. Okay, so you're running InfluxDB Cloud on AWS. Correct, yeah. Okay. How did you get the Steam API data results into InfluxDB? Excuse me, I, I, can you repeat the question? How did you get the Steam API data results into InfluxDB? Yeah, it's using as maybe the, the question was before that I showed, but it's adding in the CS, uh, CS uh, CSGO SH5 in the core. In this command, in this uh, URL, you insert the key here that I, I am selecting here. That's it. This is, oops, sorry. This is my key. And this is the Steam ID that this is the player. In this case is my stat. Perfect. Um, Alan, let me know if that answers your question. I can always unmute yeah. you if you'd like to um, talk directly to Ignacio. Um, Alan also asked, can you share? Okay, uh, I'm going to unmute 
So, Alan, you should be able to unmute yourself now and talk. Oh. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks. Hi, Alan. I, it's not clear to me how you got the uh, all the data into Steam. I see where you're using the, the query here, this curl statement, but how is it getting into mm -hmm. Influx? Using you... Telegraph. Pardon? Using Telegraph. Okay, I, didn't, I didn't see that part where you're using Telegraph to oh, push so, the yeah, 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 no problem. You can see here in the terminal this that all the all the data is. Let me, let me show you. It's, this is a Telegraph configuration. The output, the URL that point to my Cloud2 instance, the token the, uh, as environment variable, uh, the organization to the buckets, and I am using the input exec that is running this file. And okay, I added a, a suffix for for declare in, in my buckets, and the, and specify uh, and speci I specify the data format. One of the things that I want to do with this template is going I'm going to update to use the HTTP JSON plugin, and in that, in that case you, you don't need um, you don't need to uh, create or or has a, a separate file to get the, the data. But as it is, works uh, works very well. Okay, thank you. So which no which problem. Telegraph plugin are you using, Ignacio? Input exec, the exec okay. plugin. Okay, cool. Um, awesome, and then Alan had another question here. Can you show the raw database in Chronograph to show us how the data is tagged or organized into measurements. Yeah, I can show. I can show you. One of the things that uh, I do it with this InfluxDB instance is monitoring the COVID case in South America. Maybe uh, you can you you, you see that uh, in other in other uh, in other web page or something like that. And um, but back into CSGO. Up here, and first you you're going to see the, the achievement, but after that, the player start total, for example. So there you go. Value in this case is. Do you mind yeah, closing sorry, the sorry, terminal sorry. window? Cool. Yeah, it's easier yeah. to see. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, closing this, we're going to. Okay. For example, this one that I choose, I don't know. And maybe before, this is the um, the last match kills value. Okay. So going to. And you can see, yeah, I, I don't play. I I I didn't I didn't play it uh, recently. Only yesterday, so it took the the value of the that match, and what my kill count was eight in this case. I don't know if that uh, answered your question. I think that yes, that was it. Thank you. No problem. Fantastic. This is okay. This is more data because I I I know that the API uh, was updated. Uh, Let's start match players and was added. I, I can see that more data was added. So I'm going to review that uh, 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 and maybe update the template to, to get more data in, into the template. So, yeah. And I just threw in, um, someone was asking for the GitHub link. So I threw those in uh, the Zoom chat as well. Um, yeah, this is great. So. Does, if anyone um, has any more questions for Ignacio, please feel free to post them in the chat um, or Q&A. And so next month, as I mentioned before, the next uh, time virtual time series meetup is it gonna be about uh, monitoring your internet service provider upload and uh, download speeds, which like I said at the beginning, I think we're all more acutely aware of that in the last year. And then we also have uh, Influx Days coming up in May. So we have the Flux training 
Uh, coming back, um, Flux is, of course, our querying and scripting language, and that class is always a huge success. Um, it's it, it's really interesting seeing people get super excited about Flux, and of course, the class is all about pizza. Um, leave it the, the two of the actually three of the trainers live in Italy, so leave it to them to make yeah. it about <laughs> about pizza. Um, so it's it's a lot of fun, um, you know. We, of course, would love to see everyone in person. I'm sure we will next year. I hope so. Um, but, you know, if you, it's a really great event. There is a fee attached to the training. We just want to make sure that there's a really good student to uh, trainer ratio, just so that, you know, the trainers are able to answer everyone's questions and all of that. So it's a fantastic Yeah, I recommend event. you, yeah, sorry to interrupt you. I recommend that training I take, I took, uh, that training last year uh, was very fun, and it was very fun. Heard uh, uh, the, the, the the instructor that say mozzarella, mozzarella, very Italian. <laughs> was was very very useful. I I understand a lot of of blocks that uh, I I maybe didn't understand. I fully understand before, so mm -hmm. I recommend you that training. Yeah. And, you know, we are always available um, in the community Slack, in the forums. Um, you can often find us also on Twitter, uh, everywhere. Um, so if you guys have any questions for Ignacio after this, um, I'm just going to put him on the spot. You can totally reach out to him on Slack. He's always super helpful um, and always willing to help out our community. So if there's something specific um, about what he showed today, or if you're trying to build your own InfluxDB template or monitoring your own game. Um, he's definitely there to help. And we're, and the entire Influx Data team is definitely always there and willing to help out um, our awesome community members. Um, Ignacio, is there, are there any other last minute um, tips or tricks that you'd like to share about creating templates or anything like that? Yeah, about the creating templates uh, was, one, one of the things that I do is I, I did, for, for create uh, all this template is is like okay what system I I am using and what data is is critical to, for me so I start to collect this data and put in the dashboard and yeah you can after that you can set alerts and so on but uh, was uh, very what um, was very important to me create dashboard of things that I need not create dashboard for with, with useless data for saying, uh, and if you need something, uh, some data, a specific data, I, I, I encourage you to, 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 to scrap APIs or, or whatever, how the, the data is throwing by your system, I start to, to, to create dashboards. And one of the things that I, that I used to learn is, uh, is try, 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 try until you have a dashboard that uh, is look like you want uh, with the data that you need. So, as as mentioned, as mentioned, Berlin, I you can find me in the community Slack channel. So I am I am there a lot of time. So I am online mostly of the time. Online mostly, of the, oh yeah, mostly of the time. So reach me there if you have any question. So send the address, Agustin Ferrario, say me, send the address, I am from Argentina, so I can read it. Oh, okay, I can read it. So, yo también soy argentino, Agustin. <laughs> I am Argentinian too, Agustin, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just down the street from you, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, maybe it's my neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, in my neighborhood, yeah. Well, it's definitely okay. more in your neighborhood than my neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, pretty sure, yeah, maybe. <laughs> now... Ignacio, if, if you don't mind sharing, are there any, you know, is there anything that you learned when you just started building InfluxDB templates a year ago? What were some of the biggest hurdles? Like what made you think, okay, this would be a good template. This wouldn't be a good template. I'm sure there's people out there who have seen all the different templates that are out there and are maybe thinking, oh, this might be a cool template idea, or maybe it's not. How do you determine which are the ones to create and the ones to put on the back burner? Yeah, uh, that's that. That is a good question. 
what I basically I, I, I did uh, before create an template is try to understand what is the most useful data for create that template. For a MongoDB, for example, I am not expert on MongoDB. So I try, I investigate on what, what is the, the best data or what is the most important data when you are monitoring uh, MongoDB. And, 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 the, and the good is, is, for me, it's not like bad template or not good template. It's the, the template that suits your needs is a good template. It's for, because maybe you don't have uh, you don't have the same needs that other user, and whatever needs suit to your use case is is a great template. And what you know, going back to the your gaming multiplayer gaming, you know, I know you kind of showed like your um, game overhaul overall has improved. Was there something else that you learned about your gaming that you didn't realize beforehand? Uh, yeah, it's like, it's, it's not attached directly to the data, but Counter-Strike is more technical games. It's, it's, it's not like running as hell uh, to kill guys there, but it's like uh, hear about the, 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 the steps of the enemies, uh, and how you use the the the, the grenades is it's like it's very interesting because it's not like pretty straightforward. Okay, I going to kill you and you, you I want you lose. It's more tactical. So yeah, first try to understand how I perform, which weak guns I help me a lot to to understand which guns use to to perform better, but. Also, all the technical matters. Uh, I'm watching the pros, you know, and watching the pros and trying to to understand what what they doing and why they doing that. Uh, Help me a lot. Yeah, that's awesome. And have you been able to share your InfluxDB template with your gaming friends? Have they been using it? Uh, yeah. In fact, yeah. In fact, no. Yesterday, I I, I told you one of the guys that. I I going to do this talk and they don't know that I I, I track in my my performance in the game so yeah uh, yeah that create a necessity to show them this <laughs> but yeah it's it's okay it's cool that's funny you had a leg up on them and now they're like oh now we know how Ignacio is improving his game yeah yeah in, in fact yeah in fact uh, they they don't understand what my improvement over this this short of time is like in two three months I paid from the silver two rank is the lowest one uh, to one of the most important of, of the middle you know it's it's not the better you know it's not the best but in the middle Nova master is it's a good rank but yeah they don't they don't understand it they say me you are cheating no no I am not cheating no no I don't I know interest in cheating it, this is some this is again. This is I am playing for fun. It's like no need to cheat. So yeah, uh, that's awesome. Was, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so it looks like Andrew has a question. Um, do you know if the stats can be tracked in Steam offline mode, or if stats are uploaded when switched from offline mode to online mode? Um, ah, Andrew, I'm. Andrew, I'm gonna let you talk so you can actually unmute yourself if you like. Okay. Yeah, hi. Put you on the can spot you, or anything. Sorry, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, we yeah, can perfect. hear you great. No yeah, uh, yeah, no, I was just wondering if uh, the stats, is there any way to track it when you play a game in Steam offline mode? That's it. Uh, um, when you are in invisible, in invisible mode, for example, when you're not connecting to avoid some people. <laughs> Yeah, or um, sometimes we play games uh, just in offline mode so that there's no communication, I guess, to Steam servers. So I was just wondering if there's any way to st oh, to track yeah, it. Yeah, no. No. No, no, no. no. I, sorry. As far as, as far I know, no. But maybe, maybe, and that is time to investigate, maybe uh, the, the server has some data that can be exported and can be exploited in some way. So 
You are, you, you are giving me a task. You are giving me homework. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't <laughs> trying to. I was just, just wondering if you do. <laughs> right, yeah, I, I don't I, even know if Steam like saves it maybe locally in a file before it uploads it to uh, their servers. So I don't, I don't know. I was just wondering if you had any insight there. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure that ha something has to be there because yeah, if not, always, yeah, yeah. Ha Something has to be there in that server. Is we need to find how to exploit that data. But I'm pretty sure that it's homework. You gave me homework. homework. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for your no for your presentation today. It was great. Awesome, Andrew. Uh, I'm assuming Ignacio answered all of your questions. I know you kind of posted a couple there. So sure did. Thank you. Awesome. Well, fantastic. Uh, thank you, everyone for joining today's uh, meetup. It's always great seeing our community online and you know getting to chat with you, even if it's virtual. Uh, I look forward to seeing you all next week at the InfluxDB IOX Tech Talks, um, as well as next month for uh, the next virtual meetup. And I would love to, if any of you are using InfluxDB at home, I'd love to hear from you so we can figure out how to highlight it. It's always fun seeing what people are doing with InfluxDB at home. You know, a lot of people will say, well, this isn't that cool. I'm like, actually it is. You know, there's so many other people that um, would find this interesting. Maybe they want to implement it themselves. So keep them coming. Um, I, it's always fun getting to chat with our community. So thank you so much. Um, once again, the session has been recorded and will be available for replay later today. And yes, um, Alan, the InfluxDB templates, they've been around for about a year. Uh, there's a ton of them out there. I think Ignatia, you've created what, 10? I I'm rounding up, but you've built a lot. There's, there's a ton out there, um, there and there's always more coming. I'm actually gonna see if I can find and actually, do you have the repo with all the templates? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me. I'm just wondering if we can throw that in the chat. I think the GitHub repo probably has some, that, that, there's that complete list that I'm sure people would find interesting. Oh, oh. Andrew beat us to it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, all right, so I, um, I threw that repo into um, the chat so everyone should be able to see it. Um, so thank you everyone for joining today and I hope you have a good day. Thank you so much.